Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to this month on Minecraft. This month diss tracks have come out, Minecraft and Netflix collab and Tommy Unit has issues with his balls. This month, Minecraft celebrates its 15th anniversary and with it, so many new updates and announcements have come from Mojang in this month. Minecraft have released new capes, new snapshots, almost everything under the sun, but there are a few things in particular. Towards the end of the month, Minecraft released a very exciting trailer that shows a massive incoming collab. Rumours were going around for so long that a show was on the way and it's finally confirmed. I'll definitely be giving a IMDB-esque review because boy I'm so excited. Minecraft has also announced another collab with MCC, Minecraft's monthly tournament. Although we know what's happening with Netflix and Minecraft, we're not too sure about MCC. My guess is some sort of IRL event where the contenders are at some sort of, I don't know, arena or something. But this also leads to an actual Minecraft event that was actually confirmed in real life. In Dallas, Texas, Minecraft announced their villager rescue experience coming in September. The experience is around an hour long, but the ticket prices are not revealed yet. There's a lot more information on Minecraft's website, like when you should arrive, if you can take pictures, all of that, so make sure to check it out. What I will say though is Minecraft have absolutely outdone themselves with this anniversary. I mean, it's crazy. Also, this month, Dan TDM revealed that he had to get an emergency surgery because of his appendix. He would have regular pains in his stomach for the past five years and two weeks ago it got bad. He had this random extremely sharp pain in his appendix area and was rushed to the hospital. He couldn't feel his arms or feet no matter how hard he tried to move them. In the end the appendix got removed in surgery and all of his problems were solved. Yay! He will be returning to his channel in a week's time and is back posting to normal after a four month break. We love Dan TDM, I mean yeah, hey we love him. Another Minecraft YouTuber, Tommy Innit, has also had issues with his body. Tommy posted an Instagram picture which shocked fans saying that he had surgery on his balls. He woke up one day and had an intense pain in his right testicle. He rushed himself to the hospital and once checked by doctors, he was told that his right ball could be dying. So what happened is that his right testicle got twisted so much while sleeping that the blood supply had been cut off. In the end though, his balls were saved and you can hear the full story in an interview with Dr. Mike. I mean, holy bollocks man, that must have been a scare. Also this month, a brand new world record for obstacles has been set by Sloy May at 30.5 seconds. But the craziest thing is, this isn't even a new world record. It's a tie with another player who set the same time 20 hours earlier. The time of 30.505 is exactly matched down to the thousandth of a second. It's honestly phenomenal to see that this map has been around since forever and it's still being played to this day. I mean, I hope the players don't encounter any obstacles improving their times. Moving on, a week ago, the Levels SMP announced that they will be ending their time as an SMP. In a statement they made, they said they were going to be a group of friends and don't want to be seen as a creator SMP anymore. Honestly, this leveled me when I first saw it and I was surprised because even though it's not what it once was, it's still a decent server. I thought they were going to take things to another level, but it seems like they won't be. <laughs> I need to stop these, this is getting out of hand. Also this month, the Caboodle SMP has announced its third season with a lot of surprising new names. The biggest names include Clown Pierce and Ash Swag, with one member still to be announced. The trailer they released is without a doubt one of the coolest things I've ever seen and it looks like it's going to be very lore based for this season. I don't know too much about the Caboodle SMP but the lore based like new season, it looks very cool. I mean, they've added a whole Caboodle of new players so hopefully the season goes well. The Money SMP has announced that they will be opening applications for Season 2. The server announced they'll be opening applications earlier this month in a very cringe fashion, I must say. Guys, Money SMP Season 2 applications are coming out. I love Borm and Soul so much. Okay, no. 
As season 5 of Life Still comes to an end, the server announced that it will be opening up applications. In its most recent season, Life Still lost some of its most influential members, so it's definitely interesting to see who they will add to the server next. The server is yet to announce the date of its season 6, but I'm looking forward to it regardless. Also on Life Still last month, Vitality announced that he will be leaving the Life Still SMP indefinitely and not knowing when he will return. Well, he released his last video called The Story of My Last Block, and honestly, it's such a good video. It covers his entire story from top to bottom, and I very I highly recommend checking it out. I mean, hopefully Vitality returns in the shortest time possible. Moving on, after a whole two months, Tabo's subathon has finally come to an end. In a tweet, he said that he was so grateful for the whole two months that he was live and he appreciates everything. Tabo started a subathon around the time that all of the Wilbur Sut allegations and George Not Found drama happened, so you can imagine it was a lot for him to take. But he plowed through it and finished his subathon as if nothing happened. Hopefully he enjoys the money he made and it comes back stronger. Also this month, as Tommy Innit turns 20 years old this year, he's been doing some reflecting after his tour ended very early on this month. In two videos that he released this month, they both talk about how his life changed as he has grown older. He isn't the kid that he once was and for a long time, he lost that YouTube drive that he once had. But now that he started his comedy tours, he started to get the motivation to put effort into something and be excited for it to succeed. You know, fun fact, I was meant to turn up to the first ever Tommy Innit show in Brighton. I, I was literally meant to be there and I was going to turn up in a Spider-Man suit. Like how sick would that have been? But I couldn't be there for personal reasons. It's, it's very, very annoying. But imagine how iconic it would have been. Oh my God. A Twitch streamer by the name of Madimu TV has been kicked off the Twitch SMP for a very dark reason. Earlier this month, someone called Illogical Order posted a statement on the Twitch streamer that goes like this. As you may have noticed, Madimu TV has been banned from many events and SMPs. This is due to grooming, stalking and harassment. Maddy, I am disappointed in you as you claimed it was a joke but evidently did it which makes it disgusting. An entire document was compiled together by all of the victims and I highly recommend that you check it out. I skim read the document and it's so messed up. I'll leave a link down in the down in the description. Earlier this year, I made a story about PvP Legacy where the mod team was hiding a fact that a member of the mod team was a pedophile. He was an 18 year old who was with a 14 year old. For more detail, check the video on screen. Now, back then, the mod team didn't classify him as a pedophile and neither did Archul and Take9 who made the discovery about this. Archul himself said that he disagreed with me when I said that he was a pedophile. Until recently, where Take9 posted a video titled GG and this this is the video. They're calling him a pedophile and, and a groomer because of what he said, which in some ways, I guess you could, you know, you could argue that, right? And in some ways, I definitely agree with you now. I mean, hey, if the mod team themselves are calling him a pedophile, then uh, that's all we need. Also this month, Render has revealed the real truth behind his viral ARG video. Earlier this month, Render posted an ARG video that caught 2.8 million views and everyone loved it. But he revealed that he doesn't stumble across these channels himself and instead gets writers and actors to create the channel. He does say that he did a lie about saying he randomly found the channel so that the video feels real. Although he he did actually do all of the problem solving himself, so that part of it feels real at the very least. I like that he was actually honest about the situation and not lie and be like, yeah guys, I actually found it myself. People will always complain that it ruins immersion and all of this, but personally, I think it's better to know earlier on than later when, you know, it could be taken worse by the community. A crystal PvP player called Marlo just got exposed by a smaller YouTube channel in what has to be one of the most epic things I've ever seen. So Marlo is a player who has been faking a double persona imitating a girl called Danger Mario and the evidence I've seen to prove it is crazy. I very, very highly recommend checking out the original video, but this is what Zay found. The PC specs in a video from Marlo and Danger Mario Mario is the exact same. The hot bars that are used in both videos are the same. Both videos have the exact same unique cursor and the text properties used in both videos are also the same. If that's not enough evidence to prove it, then I don't know what is. Hey, everybody.
Hey everybody, Captain E. Relix Tyler here, Minecraft's busiest music nerd. And I'm here to review the recent drama between Infuse and Bliss. Now this happened earlier this month, and to be fair, when I first heard both songs, I was like, there's no way this is real. But then the more and more I listened to it, I was like, these diss tracks, they're actually kind of good. Well, Bliss SMP and Infuse SMP, they both started in 2022, as far as I'm aware. If I'm wrong, let me know. And the order of the diss tracks was Tale of a Bliss, Control Plus C, and The End of Bliss. Now, how did this whole thing start? Well, on a track called Ice Down made by Reddish and JJ, and there was a couple of sneak disses in the song that sort of started off this whole drama, with the main sneak diss being, since Enoch's around, the members that hung up the ice, they're not even placing that shit. And then in the description, it says, Bliss is next. So what happens after this track comes out? Will, a member of the Bliss SMP, calls JJ asking him if he's going to actually drop a full length diss track. To which JJ says, yeah, but it's mainly for fun. And then they just sort of left the whole project for a month. And then a month later, out of nowhere, a tale of a bliss drops. For the tale of a bliss, the beat starts off with like a classic piano snazzy thing. And then, and then it all of a sudden just transforms into this like, Playboy Carti, Ken Carson type of beat. And like the bass is crazy, it's just it's just hitting you all the time. And while I do think the flow of Reddish is greater than JJ's in my opinion, it's a lot harder to understand what he's actually saying. And when I mentioned that, you know, Playboy Carti type beat, he's sort of using that as well with us not being able to understand a single word that he says. Although even though I can't understand what he's saying, I do think Reddish's part is still better than JJ's because JJ just has this weird voice and it just it just sounds very off. As for the lyrics, things get very interesting right off the bat. With with one of the disses being us on the chair, Will and Murph, they ain't leaving soon. I mean, what? And then what I think is the craziest part, you can bench more than 80, but if we look at who max, his legs get shaky. As far as hard hitting direct disses go, I'll give it to JJ, but when it comes to, you know, manipulating the words and changing things around, I'll definitely give it to Reddish. Quacker 2's, Quacker Who's, yeah, your name will make the news. Call Caprylix Quacker 2, call your mama Quacker Boo. What a bar. I mean, I don't know who the Caprylix guy is. I've never met him before. But what I will say is that the street disses themselves, it can be let down sometimes by the vocal manipulation and mixing, which kind of kills the track to me. You know, sometimes the vocals, they're there when they're not meant to be. I need to fix my posture, man. But overall, I'd probably give this diss track a light to decent six. You know what, no, change, light to decent five. Yeah, it's, it's more five. And a few days after this diss track came out, Blitz released their response called Control C. The response is in a four and a half minute diss track featuring Ori, Youngie, Archul, E Corridor, and Will. The track starts off with a very piano based beat, and as a person who likes piano myself, you know, I'm all for it. But I can't help but see a bit of reminiscence from Hit Him Up by Tupac. You know, that was also a diss as well, and that was also very piano heavy. The way Ori flows on this first beat, I really like a lot and personally, it's my favorite out of the whole diss track. Like, it, you know, the way he flows, the syllables per bar. I think, I think it's just a great match from voice to beat. And when he does that never, 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 never bit, I mean, I just like it a lot more. I feel like someone's behind me when I'm doing these. Every time I record a video in here, it's just like, I feel like I'm being watched. Are we restored? Are we still recording? Okay, we are. <clears throat> you will never, never. I'm not recording my audio. It's okay, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Now you can hear me. <laughs> As I said though, the first verse in this song is genuinely the best I've heard out of um, the first two diss tracks but it's let down and it's and it just ruins a completely perfect verse for me. When Ori tries to sing on the beat, oh, it just, it completely ruins it to me. It completely ruins it. A perfect verse, down the drain. And this sinks even lower when he tries to do this, I don't know, flipping middle school, you know, you know them pianos you have in middle school when you hit that DJ, DJ, it just completely ruins it. Quit, 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 quit. Uh, it's just like, oh. It was so, it was going so well. The track was going so well. 
until it was just ruined. It doesn't sound cool. It doesn't like refresh the whole beat. It just sounds ass. Thankfully though, this whole quick, quick, quick thing doesn't drag out for too long and it ends pretty quickly. And then we get on to Youngie's verse. While I do think Youngie's verse is okay, it slowly gets ruined when he tries to rap too fast on a beat that is too slow. He starts tripping up over his own words and it doesn't sound nice. The disses themselves in this verse are all right. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty surface level stuff. It's nothing too special. Not to mention that this verse is only like 20 seconds long in a four minute diss track. And then Archwell comes up, which to me is the most interesting verse out of them all. His flow on the beat itself is all right. And but the fast rapping, it does sound a little bit annoying because it's not fully done correctly, but it's it's not that bad. You know, I was invited to chose Bliss over that any day. If you don't know a while back, there was a massive scandal where Archul made a video on Infuse calling them out and it was how he was invited and didn't actually join the server and how he exposed the server for doing x-ray and stuff like that. But to me, the reference is still crazy. Like to me, it shows that he's still holding a grudge all that while back. I mean, it's crazy. And then his verse ends with a reverb sound effect transitioning into another beat. A cymbal crashing sound is played again and again and again. And then we get sort of this interlude where E Corridor and Archwell are speaking. And to me, it, it just kind of sounds cringe. E Corridor yelling about how crazy he is and how he would he's gonna do all these things. And I think he thought it would sound cool, but it's just not. We then go into this light guitar Tame Impala type of beat, which I really like. I would say this now, out of all of the diss tracks and all of the beats in all three of them, this beat is my favorite out of them all. But the way it's mixed with the verses that are about to come up, I think it's perfect. You know, so far for me especially, the beat choices in this song specifically is amazing. I mean, beat one and beat two, phenomenal. E Corridors and Will's flows on this second beat is honestly nothing but amazing. You know, the fast rap part from Will is a banger. And the main thing is that when he does fast rap, he's not trying to fit too many words into one bar, which to me is just perfect. Where'd your public server go? The bands that you could not compensate. I mean, what? The song then does end off with, you know, a couple sentences from someone saying, oh, you fire back at us, we'll fire back at you. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this heavenly, like a Travis Scott Astro World type of beat just starts playing out of nowhere. And I feel like I'm ascending into heaven. Yes, I know these guys didn't make the beats themselves, unless they did, and which is <laughs> which is phenomenal if they did. But assuming they didn't make it, I would uh, definitely, the beat choices in all of them. I mean, the third beat is off. Oh, Apart from the little hiccups here and there, especially towards the beginning of the song, I honestly like this song a lot. While I will say the bars in this song are a lot less hard hitting than in Tale of a Bliss, it definitely makes up for itself with the production and the flow. Honestly, I really like this song and I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this one. The third and final diss track in this series is End of a Bliss, which if you didn't know already, it's a response to Control C. The diss track starts off with this classic jazzy quiet beat, just like the first one with JJ having the first verse again. And this track also features JJ, Reddish, Dumb is Dumb and Sharu. And I have to say JJ's verse again is very offbeat and he just, there's no, there's literally no flow. The bars are very simple as well, like you're predictable, this, that, this, it's just, it's very generic. The verse then thankfully ends with a yell from JJ. And while I think he thought it sounded cool, for me, it just completely misses. I do have to say though, out of all of the three diss tracks, this verse from JJ is definitely the weakest out of them all. I think his first verse in Tale of a Bliss was better. The track then uses the part from the end of the Bliss song where someone was going, we'll fire back at us, we'll fire back at you stuff like that. And they use it as a transition to a beat switch. Well, we get a family ties, Baby Keem, Kendrick Lamar type of beat. And honestly, to my surprise, JJ comes back for a second verse. I would say though, the bars on this verse hit a lot harder and it's much better than the first one. Murphy and Core Hacking, now you in the loop. That's for Capelixi getting the scoop. There are a few bits here where JJ tries to switch it up with the fast rapping, which also misses for me. But overall, it's not that bad. It's definitely a much bigger improvement than the first verse this is what am i doing the beat switches again for a second time into this 
dark emo type of beat you know very bass heavy and all of that with reddish is starting out his verse with repeating you don't want this smoke you don't want this smoke you don't want this smoke to me this mimics what chris brown did at the beginning of his song weakest link and on this beat i can't really decide if reddish's flow is very good or very bad but what I will say is that his voice does match the beat. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we transition into this Shakira, Shakira salsa type of beat with Reddish repeating Aka, 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 Ooh. It shouldn't work. It shouldn't work at all. It should sound ridiculous. But for some reason, it does work. What's even better is Reddish's flow and his timing to the beat, which is just nothing but perfection. The bars in this part of the song are kind of weak for me, but the hook definitely makes up for it. And then out of nowhere, Sheru just comes in Randy Orton RKO style out of nowhere, and it just starts spitting. The bars hit every time, and even though personally for me he was a bit quiet on the beat, his flow definitely makes up for whatever was lost there. And while it was a relatively short verse from Sheru, I think it's one of my personal favorites. The last two minutes of the song is from Dumb is Dumb, and while I do think he writes the beat well and spits disgusting bars, to me his voice doesn't really match the beat that he chose, but the near perfect flow definitely makes up for it. The bars themselves in these final two minutes of all of the three diss tracks hit harder than anything. They're cut deep, they're personal, they're just filthy. Hey Ori, prove the impossible, prove you can get a 10k first. Whenever you're rapping it sounds like it hurts, your bars or your views, I don't know what's worst. Shut up, bitch. Shut up. Oh, this is very expensive. Shut up. That's filth, that's disgusting. Brother, ugh. The mixing and the background vocals in this verse is nothing but amazing, but I do have to say it slowly gets more annoying and more, and it drops off more as the verse goes on. The track then ends with a surprise feature from Diony saying, my top 10 servers are Infuse, 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 Infuse. Infuse. Overall though, this track has very high highs and very low lows. This track for me is definitely one of the best, but it's led down by a very weak starting verse and a few hiccups here and there in the vocal production. I mean, I'm feeling a like nine on this track. So then, who do I think won the beef? Well, well in my opinion, no one completely wiped the floor with anyone. Infuse SMP! Woo! Congratulations, you have won the beef with Bliss SMP, verified by me because only my opinion matters. Honestly, I do wish there were more diss tracks coming out because low key, this was like really enjoyable to make. Seeing here and recording on a camera in this room, I never thought I would have been doing it. And also before you go on Twitter, this is all a joke. You fucking idiots. Um, sorry this came out late. I had exams. Watched the previous this month for Minecraft. Bye now.